I know we have just a little while longer. Um, so if the dinosaurs hadn't died out like they did with the final nail with the comet and everything, and I know all the, I know the, if they had been continued, if they had continued to evolve on a version Earth where they were, they didn't die out, or what would they have evolved into as far as like, would they evolved into like more of a sentient species or would they have just stayed more animalistic? They would become more sentient. Yes, they would take on avian qualities. Many of them would develop feathers. Many of them would achieve flight. Many of them would change their morphology in a way that would allow for them to actually achieve flight. And it's likely they would have become the top species. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, did any, I know the avian dinosaurs, the more raptor avian ones that we currently have, did any of this, did any of those species actually continue on for quite some time after the destruction of like? Yes, yes, because many of them were brought off world. Okay. To explore life on other planets that are similar to Earth, but would allow for them to have different versions of evolution that were in a sense were curated to higher paths relevant to those oh. beings that were brought there, to those dinosaur saurian species. See, I never heard this before. This is new. Um, and what are just one or maybe one or two, other than like the marbles, the thuk, and a few other ones that Bashar, the Bashar has said, um, what are some other interesting alien species that are out there? All right, one moment. We have mentioned this species, and we'll mention it again. The Shamana is a particular species that we have made contact with. They are quasi-physical in nature, as we are. They are very planetary in relationship to how they experience their civilization, but they explore their planet as spirit beings. They are able to travel through the multidimensional portals that exist on their planet. They can access the Akashic level of their planet, the astral level of their planet with great ease. And they are able to, in a sense, blip in and out from their planetary experience in a way that allows for them to travel to other planetary realities, such as your own, that have different types of portals that are capable of supporting interplanetary teleportation. So these beings have teleported to your Earth before and have explored your earth in many ways, and then they have been able to teleport back onto their world. It is quite interesting to observe these beings for they have not required spacecraft to do their traveling. They specifically oh. use the planet. They is use that, the planet to access other planets. Is that what the burning bush was in the, um, the Bible, blah, 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 story of Moses? That's a little bit different. That will take a little bit more time to unpack in an in-depth way. But it's not exactly the same as the Shamana. Uh, is there any other race that you'd like to share besides that one specifically? Because I know we just one have... Moment. Yeah. The Dumak. This is another group we can talk about. Okay. Their world is more of a desert world. There are oceans on their world. There are islands. But a great deal of their world is in many ways sandy and is beach-like in nature. And this has to do with different types of, you could say, cataclysmic events that took place on this world before these beings inherited it. They are, in many ways, a species that has built a great deal of artificial, you could say, land masses on their oceans to accommodate their species for the desert worlds that are a part of their planet are not very hospitable. So they have built a great deal of, you could say, artificial dwellings on top of their oceans and deep within their oceans as well. So they are in many ways undersea beings, but they also do interact with the surface for these artificial islands that they have created also support life and also have many different types of functions, including residency. What do they look like? They are similar to you in appearance. They are humanoid in nature. They have much darker skin than many of you do. 
this has to do with the intensity of their suns. How, how far away is their, um, their system away from ours? It's or not from... present in your, you could say, galactic expression. This is an extra dimensional type of reality okay. altogether. Um, how many, um, how many, so I know there's the O's that are in Sirius, but how many within like, about 50 light years of earth, are, how many civilizations do we have currently that are within our radius? There's a few within 50 light years There's about six we can observe. Yeah. The idea is that not all of their worlds are detectable yet. And to truly perceive them, again, you must be in the proper vibrational frequency. Yeah. And the idea is when you're in the appropriate vibrational frequency, you will be able to perceive them and your technology simultaneously will be able to validate that. So it will all happen at once. Yeah. And I know, I know we're in a, a radio desert, a radio wave desert. That's why we're not getting like signals because most of the civilizations are no longer using that technology anyways. Um, Correct. Yes. Yes. And most of them are quasi physical. Most of them are extra dimensional in nature. They're not as physicalized as you are. Therefore, their means of communication is different. It's not going to be the same as okay. to humans communicating. It will have qualities that involve what you describe as telepathy such as what you're seeing yeah. before you here yeah no i i, I kind of figured that was the case I, I just when you're always having other people ask questions you don't always get like the questions you want asked um and one last question how will um the fauna on earth the animals on earth change as we go forward as as a world well there's all types of different changes that we'll go through but in general you will find that their ability to communicate with all of you will increase. Now, of course, they do not communicate with words. Yeah. They communicate with, again, telepathy. Yeah. And the idea is that as you continue to evolve yourselves, you'll become more energetically sensitive to what they're communicating, and you'll be able to have full-blown telepathic conversations with them. Oh, and I... they will work with you on many levels, both in the waking state and what you call the dream state as well. And their intelligence, their abilities will also grow and evolve as you all grow and evolve yourselves. So you're evolving together in many ways. And your relationship with the animal kind will be restored. It will mirror how your ancient peoples related to the animals. Speaking of my animals, like he's like completely attached to me. Um, yeah, no, that's kind of what I thought. Like, I, I always tell everyone, take me literal when I literal when I say this. The world talks if you know how to listen. Exactly. So. Yes, precisely. It's just a matter of being more sensitive, and the whole world will open up to you. Yeah. You'll understand many things that most people simply miss, because as you've said, they're not listening. 